Warm-up for today, it says, warm-up number 25. There's a traffic jam in front of Frank Wright Middle School at 7.45 a.m. How many vehicles are stuck in the traffic jam? Now, that's not the actual picture of the traffic jam. I just gave you that picture as a reference. And I only included one vehicle there so you guys can see and use that as a reference. Now, use any tools that you need, such as rulers or paper and pencil, so you can try and figure out how many vehicles stuck in traffic. Make sure you elaborate on your explanation as to uh, why you came to a conclusion. At the end, you tell me a total of your vehicles. And at this time, I'm going to forward the screen so you can lock your toolbar and you are able to uh, write over the picture. You can either type your answer. You can also draw over the picture so, to illustrate uh, what you're trying to explain. Okay, I'll give you guys, uh, let's do five minutes. Ready? Go. Okay, so guys, here goes. So for these kind of problems, what I want to see is, number one, you have here a picture and on your iPads you can actually illustrate, can't you? Yeah. So I want to see you guys kind of like draw maybe ovals to illustrate like the size of the cars. If you're, uh, like in, in, I saw some examples look up. Some actually drew dots right here and another set of dots right here to illustrate that it was two lanes. And then somebody else drew over here on this side that this was also full of cars. So since it didn't say what was the front of the school, some went with this and with this, whereas some others just saw it, well, the front of the school is only this. Either or I would have given you points because I just wanted to see your work and your illustration and elaboration. Okay? All right. So make sure uh, just work through the problem and, and do the best you can. Okay, so with that, yeah, uh, one of these days we'll do another one. All right, so uh, there goes that. So um, last time we started, uh, last week we started with a video from Cardenas, remember that? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Be nice, be nice. Okay, um, the correct answer is that Everyone would have a correct answer if you actually illustrated and you explained your work to me. If she put that and then she actually drew pictures around the area that she thought that the cars were going to be located at. Yeah, that would have been a 10. Just, she just needed to illustrate a little bit more. Yes? So even if it's like a super crazy answer, they'll be illustrated exactly. And you justify it using measurements and stuff like that, I'll give you credit. Yeah. I'm sorry? No one got a 10. Okay. So, um, so last week we started with a video, yes, from Cardenas. And then I showed you some scales, and we said that equations come from uh, scales. And then we said that you can see inequality is also there, yes? So our objective for today, I can solve and graph one variable equation. Let's read it together. One, two, three. I can solve and graph one variable equation. Here we go. So we do not need a fair model because we already know what one variable equations are, right? All right. So um, question really quick. We have an essential question I want you to talk about with your neighbor. It says, what's the difference between an, an expression and a one variable equation? Talk it over, please. It's not on.
it all three and three. <laughs> you at least have two. Thank you, Mrs. Pierce. Here, try, try it with this one. So, uh, who can elaborate? Uh, yes, uh, Charlotte. So expressions do not have an equal sign, but one variable equations do. Pretty clear, yes? yes. All right. So let's move on. Um, we don't need a fair model. We filled that in last week. Uh, our steps: simplify, isolate, plot, and check. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. And last week we did. Uh, we went over in inverse operations. We talked about these two properties: the addition property of equality and subtraction property of equality. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Q. All right, good. And then we did that example. We did this example. Yes. All right, how about this example? Yes. We're going to do this one together. Um, and just to refresh our memory, here it goes. Uh, let's go over it together. Copy this, example three. And we're going to use this uh, using all four steps, and then we're going to do cups and tiles also because uh, what if we do have a parquet Friday? And I ask you to do cups and tiles. Because it's, it's Friday. Part K. All right, here we go. Line down the equal sign. There it is. So uh, step one, simplify. Can we simplify the, the right side? Nope. How about the left side? Nope. Uh, step two, isolate the variable, which means we need to look at the operation. This is... Subtraction, what is the inverse? Addition. We add 1, add 1. These cancel. And if I add 1 to each side, tell your neighbor the property for that one. Bless you. Very good. Addition property of equality, my goodness. Negative 5 <laughs> equals K. Uh, look up to the screen really quick. Now, some of you, some of you, I'm not saying all of you, some of you might be doing this. Look up. You guys ready? Okay, here it goes. Some of you might be doing this. K equals negative 5. What's the difference between this and that? In a sense, not nothing, right? But in reality, if we're working this out step by step, where is the K at right now? On the right side. I want you to leave it where it lies. I don't want you to be switching it around. Does everybody understand that? Make a mental note for yourself, please. Because when we get to the other problems that require different steps, I don't want you guys switching stuff around. I want you to work it as is. Okay? I know some of you like the variable on the left side, working it to the right. I want you to leave it as it is. Okay? All right. Let's, uh, let's plot our, our solution. Draw your number line. Be right with you. We got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Some of you do this. Look up. Some of you do this. Now, the, the steps means plot. Is that plot? No. no. Plot means that you need to place your point on the number line. I'm just trying to make a point here. Get it? <laughs> Let's check. <laughs> Let's check. So write your equation, negative 6 equals k minus 1. Substitute which value? K. Okay. All right, so we substitute negative 5 in there. Negative 5 and negative 1, that's negative 6. Is that equal to negative 6? Yes, that is true. Okay. All right, so then draw a line like this, and then we're going to write cups and tiles, because you are going to illustrate that as we go along. Here we go. So here it goes again. For those of you that didn't get it last time, we read our problem from left to right, and everything that you read from left to right, you will illustrate using cups and tiles. What's the first thing? Negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What do we use to illustrate the equal sign? A line down. Very good. What's next? The variable? 
It's one variable, right? Yeah. So it's a cup, so I'm just going to make a circle. Now, some of you like to actually draw the cup. That's fine, but I'm just going to leave it as a circle. And then what's next? A negative one? Negative one. All right. Therefore, we need to leave the cup by itself to find out how many of these are going to fit in here. So we need to get rid of this negative. How do we get rid of that negative? Add a positive to make a zero pair here. And whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. So now that we're done with that, we go to step two. We bring this down. We're left with a cup. And how many negatives? One, two, three, four, five. Therefore, negative five equals K. Yes? Very simple? Yeah. Okay, so what if you have like two variables on that are like on different sides, and you know you like uh, you have to take one off and then put it to the other side? We'll get to that when uh, we get to that. Yeah. Yeah, but like uh, when you do that, does it matter which side you move it to? We'll get to that when we get to that. Yeah, yeah, I am gonna uh, elaborate on that. Yes. Will you mark the comma and test if you put k equals negative five instead of negative five? And if you want to write it. Um. Let's say for right now, like I said, if if you leave, for example, look at this one. We get rid of the one, yes? So where's the K at on the right side? And I said, leave it as it lies, right? So for right now, leave it as it lies. Let's say you're rushing and, you, you know, you mess, mess up, fine, I'll give you the point. But what I'm saying, try and get used to leaving it as it is, okay? Yes? Why do we check the four errors? Why do we plot the four errors? Why do we plot before we check? Yes. Okay, here it goes. Why are we, by the way, why will we plot? Okay, let me show you where we're going. We started the school year with real numbers, is that correct? Yeah. We moved on to expressions, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And that encompassed all polynomials and so on and so forth. And now we're moving on to what? Equations. And that encompasses one variable equations of all kinds, two-step, multi-step, and so on and so forth. Well, guess what comes after that? Inequalities. Who remembers inequalities? Graphing using inequalities. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yes? Okay. Now, the first step to graph inequalities, you need to graph this point. Now, I'm going to give you a heads up. In the past, some of you don't know what this point is called when you're graphing inequalities. Tell your neighbor what it's called. You're like, I don't know. Wow, very, it's a dot, wow. Uh, that was the answer that I was waiting for. Anyway, uh, it has a specific, it has a specific name, that's why I want you guys to get used to first plotting that point when we get to inequalities, I'll explain what it's called. Does that make sense? This is the year of the what. I'm going to be showing you the what. What is it called and, and why. Okay? All right, let's move on. Any questions with uh, cups and tiles and solving the four-step problem? Yes? We got this? So a problem like this, hint, for Friday, just in case we had a parte, would be worth five points. Three points for this. One, two, three four, and five. So, with that said, copy this down. No more questions. Here we go. Hold on to your questions. I know. that, that I said hold on to your question, and then you give me another one right now. Example 3Q. Copy this. Example 3Q. Let's do um, about five equals x plus three. I want you to solve that using the four steps and also using illustrating with cups and tiles. Once you're done, I'm going to give you the screen. I'm going to push the screen so you can actually take the picture and show me your work. Okay? Here we go. Lock your toolbar. I'm sorry? I'm sorry? Yeah, cups and tiles. No, you, the whole thing exactly what we did on the previous one. 
Either one. Whichever you want. You can either do the work on the screen or do it on paper and take a picture. Now, some of you that write like with your feet, make sure, uh, you know, be neat as neat as possible. Okay? Go. Um, all right, copy this next one on your paper. Uh, example four. On that one, you don't have to do with cups and tiles. Just solve, plot, and check. You got 30 seconds. Go. All right, check with the neighbor, see what they got. Okay. How about... Go ahead, um, Brian, what'd you get? I got 2.4 is equal to T. 2.4 is equal to T. Hands if you got that. That is correct, and you plotted your, uh, your solution which was 0, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2.4 is about a little bit less than half, about right there, 2.4. Oh, you can't see? My bad. There it is. And then you checked uh, 4.2 equals T plus 1.8, 4.2 equals 2.4 plus 1.8, and it looks like it's 4.2 equals 4.2. All right, so we got these, right? All right, so now we're moving on to uh, multiplication and division. So copy the two properties, multiplication property of equality and division property of equality. Bless you. You don't have to write the examples. Just write in your own words what, uh, what each property means. Multiplication property of equality and division property of equality. So we have covered addition property of equality and subtraction property of equality. And what were those? That whatever you did to one side, either addition or subtraction, you did to the other, right? So we can give me the definition for multiplication property of equality, Maya. What would be in your own words without looking at the uh, definition? Uh-huh. Multiplication property of equality is when, when multiplication is yes, when multiplication is done to both sides of the equation. Very good. Therefore, division property of equality, Francesca, is by the same number or variable. All right, good. All right, copy this problem, please. Negative six equals two V, example six. Okay, let's do this one uh, once again with with uh, the four steps, and also we're going to use cup, cups and towels to see how that looks. Line down the equal sign. Can we simplify the left side anymore? No. The right side anymore? No. Therefore, we need to leave the V by itself. What's next to it? To what operation? Multiplication. What is the inverse? So we divide by 2, divide by 2. So what happens to the twos? They don't cancel. They become a one. Because if they were to cancel, what does that become? Zero. What is zero times V? Zero. So therefore, it's one times V is V. We're left with negative three. Okay, let's graph or plot our point. We got zero, one, two, three. Plot my point. There it is. Does everybody see my point? Yes. And then we're going to check. We got negative six equals two V. Negative six equals two times negative three. Negative six equals to negative six. Yes. Cups and tiles.
one, two, three, four, five, six. And now it says 2V, which means how many cups? Two. One, two. Okay? Let's go to the second step. There's a dilemma here because we have two cups side by side. We need to split this up, right? So we have one cup and another cup. So we see exactly how many fit in there. But if we split this group up, what do we need to do with this one? So evenly it splits at what? At three. So this is one, two, three. One, two, three. Therefore, how many per cup? Negative three equals V. That make sense? Okay. All right. Uh, so you won't spend a lot of time uh, putting away the iPad. Just put them on top. That's fine. I'm going to have my crew uh, after school help me out. Uh, your home play for tonight is a play sheet that's in the back, 2.3. Home play is play sheet 2.3. There's tutoring today. If I don't see you, enjoy your home play. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. The entire 2.3.